Okay, I'm going to attempt to do a quick explanation, a, a synopsis of gray coats in the wilderness. I don't really have anything set up right now, but I just grabbed a few figures. Um, I should point out these are not based per the actual recommendations of black, of not black powder, of gray coats in the wilderness, but it really doesn't matter. It's like most war games. Um, what matters is are the opposing sides able to, you know, form battle lines that um that are compatible with each other for whatever purposes like of course in this game it's possible you can have units some units are bigger than others just depending on their historical size but um obviously if you've got the same amount of troops of course against the same amount of troops generally speaking your your line should match and that's really all that matters um prior to uh Redcoats in the Wilderness, this actually superseded Wilderness Wars, uh, which was, um, you know, the original set, rule set for this. I played Black Powder prior, and I liked the simplicity of Black Powder. Uh, this is actually just as straightforward, really. Um, I've got, you know, my, my club uses this rule set, and I've kind of transitioned to this rule set for home games because... The historical results usually come out a lot closer to um, reality or, you know, what actually happened uh, in, with Redcoats in the Wilderness and Black Powder, at least the way I've been, I've been playing it. The, 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 I guess with Black Powder, one thing that's kind of a pain is you need to have the individual statistics for the individual regiments. In Redcoats in the Wilderness, they have a class system. Uh, and so, you know... I agree playing game right now you know, multiply this by four it's like okay british regulars uh they're experienced british, british regulars but they're not elites so they're class b uh these regulars might be a little bit fresher so they're class c uh these are militia so maybe they're class d or class e these americans typical american continentals class c uh so once they have their you know their class you don't have to be constantly looking at Oh yeah, what what are the stats for this unit again? What are they? You just have to know what what you know. They're class A, they're class B, they're class C, and most are going to be class B or class C anyway. Uh, there's a few uh, special circumstances. British regulars don't generally, if they're in good form, they don't have to do a morale check before a charge because if you look historically at battles in the like the American Revolution, the French and Indian War, when they were told to charge, they charged usually. <laughs> so. Uh, there's no need to do that. Um, though, though, you know, the, the, I think one of the reasons this game is more, gets more historically accurate results than um, uh, some of the other games I've played is just the fact that they do have a lot of modifiers uh, in this particular game. And you do technically have to look at those modifiers. But, you know, once you play the game, enough you, they kind of become they're pretty intuitive things like you know being outflanked or you know being undercover so it's not it's not like these are really wild crazy where do they get those modifiers they they make sense uh but so uh that really it's it works pretty well it's pretty efficient once you know how to play the game <coughs> if you're playing with people who've never played before and you have to walk them through everything of course it goes a little bit slower <coughs> excuse me um so anyway typical kinds of formations that you might expect right you know column skirmish order if they can actually do skirmish order skirmish units might be all based on one base uh and you know not necessarily not really have a facing they're just assumed to be able to shoot in every direction native americans kind of the same deal <laughs> Native Americans are respected in this particular game. They can be pretty formidable. This is not one of those games where, oh yeah, Native Americans are going to run away at the first shot. No, this is Native Americans in the wilderness. Uh, you know, they're they they're, they're warriors. Um, so anyway, let's go to typical game order. What happens and such. I mean, we could have obviously you know. Speeding things, up, speeding up contact here a bit, but the first phase is initiative, both sides roll to see who gets to determine turn order. Generally speaking, uh, you know, let's just say for example here, 
Uh, they roll, and the British commander wins. He wins the roll. So what that means is he can determine if he's first or second. Generally speaking, it pays to go second in this game, but if you're going to do any charges and you don't want to risk the enemy walking away, then you would take the initiative. So in this case, we'll you know, say you'll go first, basically. So uh, in this particular game, we'll say the British rolled and the British said, yeah, we're going to go first. Because the very first phase after initiative is charges and counter charges. So... If I, so first of all, the British go to the British. Okay, we're going first. We're going to declare a charge. They're charging these militiamen over here. Now, they're actually close enough. They're because they're British, they don't have to do an initiative roll. They can just go right, they can go right in. Now, depending on how close they are, will determine whether the uh, militia, um, you know, whether, whether the militia, basically how they get to react. And... Generally speaking, there'd have to be a morale check to see if they stick around. And if they pass the morale check, uh, if, there's enough, if the, there's enough space, if the British have to cover enough ground, what will happen is they'll get a chance to uh, either countercharge or shoot before the British close. And when they shoot, they shoot at slightly less favorable modifiers than they would in a normal, uh, in a normal combat situation. If they, do, if they are able to do that, uh, and they open fire, then, um, of, you know, of course, you check for British losses. And if the British take, you know, at least 25% losses, then they might have to do a morale check, too, to see whether they can close or not. Uh, if they, um, you know, if everything is fine, the charge is going to proceed, the British aren't stopped. What happens, basically, is you move them into contact with each other, and you just set them aside for a moment. Uh, next phase is movement. So in the movement phase, again, okay, we got the British going first, so they have to go first. So if I choose to move the, this unit forward, as long as they don't move more than half of their distance that they can move, they will be allowed to fire. They, but when they fire, if they move at all, it's going to reduce their effectiveness a bit. If you stand still, if, the, if a unit just stays in place, then they don't get that negative modifier. So ideally, of course, if you're in a good spot, you don't want to move, obviously. Uh, if you're advancing and you want to fire, you just have to make sure that you don't, you don't go, I believe it's uh, uh, more than 50% of what your movement capability is. And that's representing the time taken, essentially, like whether they're, and moving, whether there's time for them to shoot or not. They spend all their time marching instead. Uh, next phase is, um, I know it's command and control listed, but it's usually not an issue. I mean, honestly, you know, usually people keep their officers in, 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 in a, the, uh, you know, close enough. So that's not an issue. Next phase is the firing phase. And one thing I like about this particular system is it's simultaneous fire. Uh, the problems I've had with other games like Black Powder, I mean, this is this is crazy in my opinion. You know, oh, they're way back here or something. Uh, you know, out of range or something. And, oh, they roll really well. And, ah! <laughs> you know, here we are. Open fire. Boom, 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 boom. And they get blasted. The defenders don't even get a chance to open fire. Or you get a situation which can be frustrating. Say that it's move, attacker moves and defender fires. Well, they keep advancing. Oh, we're going to keep retreating. <laughs> we're going to keep advancing. We're going to keep retreating. <laughs> so that's what I like about the simultaneous fire is you avoid that kind of stuff, you know, the, those kind of games. Um, simultaneously fire, and they take whatever casualties that they take. Uh, next phase <clears throat> is morale. Uh, generally speaking, a unit has a take it, I should say, for a typical unit, uh, they, have to, they have to take 25% casualties before it really becomes an issue. Militia units, of course, can be much more susceptible to running away. Um, you know, I, I can't, I'd have to double check the charts, but I think, you know, a single hit can get them fleeing. Um, so, uh, anyway, a morale check at that point. And uh, units, of course, you know, typical kind of results. They can get, they can get disordered. They can get... They can get broken, they can get routed, um, and uh, 
I'll just send them back a moment. Let's say they got say they got routed, uh, and the reason that's important is um, uh, I'll get that to a moment. So Malie stage. Then we after all the shooting is done, all the retreats have happened. Then you go back to the Malie, and you roll for the Malie and see who's won. And of course, you know, after that's done, of course, typical kind of results. You know, someone might be pushed back. They might, it might be a tie or one side might, you know, win and usually they do and advance and they can take the position that was previously occupied by the other force. Uh, next you go to the artillery reload phase and that's significant from the standpoint of if are you are you loading the ball are you loading balls on your guns or are you load, loading canister you have to basically declare what you're loading so people know what's in the guns and then you go to rally and recovery so you know any units that have retreated uh there can be an attempt to uh i shouldn't say just retreated you know routed uh there can be an attempt to get them out of that state so that's kind of a basic of basic overview of gameplay. Um, I really like this rule set. I wasn't so wild. I mean, Wilderness Wars, I like too. The big thing I didn't like Wilderness Wars is I thought it just made units and buildings completely impregnable. Uh, and I don't, I think they modified it slightly because I don't think that's quite the case anymore. Uh, and I would have to speak very highly of this, this rule set. If you have any other questions, just let me know.